Hi, my name is Yvonne Stroman. I'm a CADCA youth trainer. Uh, thank you for allowing me time to come and speak with you today. First, let me thank the CADCA uh, organization for uh, allowing me to come and speak with you as leaders, leaders of today, uh, not tomorrow. I always say that youth are leaders of today. Your ingenuity, your knowledge, your compassion, your commitment to desire to see change in our uh, society today is um, forthright, it's honest, it's courageous, it's brave, and uh, I believe that without you, without you as young leaders, much of our communities uh, would be without a voice. Much of our communities would be um, devoid of promise and future um, change for the good. So I want to first uh, thank you um, for being here, for being part of this movement. Uh, and encourage you to, as we say, keep on keeping on, right? Um, so my purpose here is really twofold. First uh, is to give honor to you as young people, to encourage you, to support you, and to let you know that, you're, that you are not alone that uh, there are individuals uh, far and wide who see your importance, who see your significance on this planet and who want to support you and to encourage you. Um, secondly, just kind of want to share some things with you as you move forward in your day-to-day -day life, as you move forward to make positive decisions for yourself, as you move forward to make impact community change impact in your communities uh, to uh, give you some tools, perhaps some ideas, perhaps some things that you can rally around and take action about so that that change comes to life. So I want to talk with you first about who you are as a leader, as a change maker, uh, then want to talk to you about uh, how do you reach out and make sure that you take care of you. Uh, who are those supports in your system, in your family, among friends, among uh, peers? Who are those people that you can go to speak with about what's on your heart, what's on your mind, and feel comfortable in knowing that you're gonna get the support that you need? And then we're gonna have a conversation about some of the things that are impacting young people today, talking about their well-being, talking about um, mental health. You know, I've done training uh, all over the United States uh, and even have had the privilege of going uh, out of the country uh, and worked with some dynamic young people in Africa. Uh, and what I hear oftentimes from young people is that uh, they want to be part of that spark plug, that change in communities, but they also know that there are some uh, issues that are impacting the quality of life of young people. And sometimes those things can get in the way, such as mental health and substance abuse and uh, perhaps self-harm uh, and uh, social injustices and all of those things kind of weigh heavy on the hearts and minds of young people. And so I wanna have a little conversation about what that might look like and feel like and uh, maybe give you some opportunity to think about how that resonates in your personal life how that impacts you and maybe affect you, but then begin to talk about how you can actually, through self-care, begin to uh, strategize and take action so that when you are embarking upon your journey, when you are going about uh, creating change, not only for yourself and your neighborhood, but for ultimately uh, the community, the state of Ohio, right? Um, what are those things that you need to do or that you can think about doing to make sure that you're taking care of yourself while 
you're conquering the world, right? So actually, if we can just begin to think about that, I'd like us to do a little exercise first. Oftentimes we take for granted um, our state of being. And by that, I say we take for granted that we need to remember to breathe. So what I wanna invite you to do right now is to take a deep breath through the nose and just exhale a little bit through the mouth. Let's do that again. Take in through the nose and just exhale through the mouth. And what that does is it really kind of just settles us. That just makes a little bit of a difference when we consciously think about breathing. Uh, and that's called mindfulness, kind of honoring the present through awareness, through how we're feeling, uh, through analyzing the pulse that of the blood that runs through us, our heartbeats, uh, perhaps slowing down just a little bit to take in the fresh air. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is as I swing my legs across the bed, as I take in a deep breath and just realize that my heart's beating, that I got a rhythm of flow about me in terms of getting ready for my day. And so it allows me to relax and to feel the present moment and maybe kind of, you know, get loose and let the muscles and blood flow and just really begin to embrace the day. So I invite you to think about what are some things that you can do to kind of get your day situated and underway first thing in the morning. Uh, and sometimes that just means sitting. Sometimes just allowing the quietness to come into our existence and observe what we're seeing, taking it in without judgment. That's what mindfulness is. It means being in our state of where we are in our present moment being quiet, resonating with it without judgment and just allowing that existence to take place. Sometimes it can happen for 30 seconds. Sometimes it can happen for three minutes, but the importance of honoring yourself where you are in that present state allows then the opportunity to feel, to think, to breathe and to just be and that is good, that is good. So let's just talk a little bit about you as a leader and what does that mean to you? So oftentimes we have a lot of different conversations. We have many, many different conversations about music, about you know what the latest movie is, about what's happening in our society with COVID-19 or with some of the, the social injustices that are happening. Um, and so we have a lot of conversation about those things because they're in front of us, right? We see them on TV, we hear them on the radio, we see them on Facebook, uh, maybe a TikTok or something of that nature, right? They're right there in front of us. But we don't necessarily talk a lot about leadership. If I ask you to think about who is a leader or what's a leader, you'll probably think about somebody maybe, I don't know, maybe the president of the United States, Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, you might think about your principal at your school. Um, you may even think about the, the adults, but usually it's somebody that's an adult, right? But I want to tell you something. Young people are leaders. You are a leader. Um, know that you are a leader by virtue of some of the decisions that you make. People are looking up to you. Uh, those of you that might have a younger brother and sister, you might have a younger cousin or a younger niece or nephew, they look up to you. They look up to you for guidance. They look up to you for leadership. And I tell you what, some of your peers view you as leaders. So sometimes, you know, people say, are leaders born or are leaders, you know, um, created? And I say they're both. They're both. So sometimes, you know, in terms of like um, kings and queens and princes and stuff like that, they become leaders by virtue of birth, right? Some are born to that end, and then some are created. And you are created to be leader. 
You are created to be a forefront, a mover and shaker in your community. And as such, we then talk about what some of those things that are encompassing in a leader. So when you think about, when we have this conversation, what do you think resonates? What is special about leader? What makes a leader? And so when we do our CADCA Youth Leadership Training, we talk about that. We talk about the importance of leadership and how leadership shows up. And there are actual seven different characteristics of a leader, right? One that is uh, committed, one that is collaborative, one that speaks their mind, feels it in their heart, and shows it through behavior. That's called congruence, right? One who is uh, who practices civility, right? One who can have communication and agree to disagree, right? So civility means that they are committed to the cause. Civility means that um, it's about engagement. And it's about um, working side by side despite the differences that we might have, right? That's what leadership is. Leadership isn't necessarily always about commanding. You do this, you do that, and sit back and then taking the glory for it. But sometimes being a, a leader, we have to get our feet wet and our hands dirty as well. And leader is shown by example, right? So as I say these things, I want you to think about what a leader is. And I have no doubt that you'll come up with some of your peers, some folks that might sit in the classroom right next to you, some people that you might see working next to you in a, if you're working. And so I'm gonna let you know that you are a leader and don't allow your young age of 14, 15, 16, 17, whatever that is, prevent you from assuming a leadership role either in your home or in your school or in your community. Uh, I happen to know a young man who is uh, going to be going to college on the West Coast in the fall, and he worked staunchly hard for Biden's campaign, for President Biden's campaign. And now he's doing, a, he does some corresponding blog posts for the USA Today newspaper, as well as a podcast. So, you know, 18, 19 years old, he's taking charge. He's, he's already making a difference. And, you know, what resonates for me about leadership also is the opportunity to uh, lead by example, to show the right way to go. So as leaders of today, you are at the forefront. You are at the forefront of making great decisions. You are at the forefront of asking those hard questions about why is there certain policies and why is there certain legalese and what can we do? What needs to change? And putting upon us as adults to say something's got to change. If we are uncomfortable with the situations now, to say, move forward and say something's got to change. And we'll talk about that in a little bit as it relates to looking at tackling substance misuse and abuse in our communities. And sometimes people think, well, it's always been like that, but it doesn't have to always be that way. And there are things that you can do to foster that change. And then, so as young people, um, I know that you are. Um, you know, embattled with a lot of different issues. You are embattled with your own personal well-being. Um, you might have some challenges for yourself in terms of, um, you know, just different choices that you have to make. And uh, if you're not feeling well uh, and you got to be at school anyway, or you got to be at work anyway, or if you are, uh, you know, struggling with just, you know, making decisions about college, uh, maybe you're having to make some hard decisions about where you live, right? Um, and, and so I'm sharing that to say, I know that young people have a lot of things on their mind. Um, and so, you know, my question is, as a leader, how do you uh, handle those obstacles? How do you handle those challenges? 
Do you absorb them all and just take them all onto your shoulder and just say, well, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out on my own. Um, or is there someone that, or some ones in your life that you can have these conversations with to help you move through the problem to come up with a solution? Um, and who is that? Uh, do you have a best friend? Do you have a supportive adult who's willing to sit with you and listen to you and walk through those problems so that you can come up with some options? You know, sometimes we think that we need an answer, just one answer. And I dare say there may be multiple options to your problem or to your challenge, right? And so allowing the earnestness to embrace the opportunity to talk to multiple people. Do you feel comfortable doing that? And creating relationships is really, really important. You know, you just, it isn't good or wise to just go and just talk about your most deep concerns to just anyone, right? Um, and so you want to be cautious about that. And in that caution, who do you talk to? Who do you carry your challenges, your concerns, your problems, whatever you want to title them, but who do you move forward and speak to about to help you resolve and maybe move through some situations that are occurring in your life? It's important. You know, sometimes people think, well, I don't need anybody. I got this. I'm good. And the reality is, is that when you have someone else being able to look at something that's on the outside of them, inside, they can bring you another perspective. Um, and, and that's what you do as young adults every day. What you do is sometimes you see situations because you're on the outside looking at that situation and you might can say, well, why don't you do just this, that, or so? So you problem solve. You are a problem solver. But isn't it interesting? And I know for me that sometimes I can look on the outside and look at situations and say, A, B, and C might be the response, might be the answer. But when it sometimes come to my own um, challenges, my own concerns, for me, um, it's not that simple to solve. And I just think that's, that's life, right? Sometimes we can look from the outside uh, and look at things and analyze it and assess it and be like, that's it. But when it comes to our own resolve, when it comes to our own solution problems, solutions for our problems, we need some outside assistance to say, you know what, this is what's happening to me. And this is what I'm thinking about, but I just wanted to get it from somebody else's perspective. Like, what do you think? What do you think might be helpful for me? And I think that's really important that we be able to lean on someone else for support, whether it's a best friend, whether it is a, a, an adult that we trust, maybe it's our church pastor, maybe it's our aunt, um, maybe it's our cousin. Um, but I ask you to think about if there's a situation uh, in your life that you need to take a look at and probably find a solution for, um, do you have three people that you can perhaps go to? Uh, in the event that one isn't available, do you have someone else? Um, and so think about that for a minute and, and who would that be? And I'm not saying that we take all of our cares and woes to one single person um, or that we take all of our cares and woes to anyone, but there are times that we might need the reflections, the thoughts, the ideas, the suggestions from others so that we find um, a resolution to our circumstance. And I guess what I'm trying to say to you, young leaders, is that um, all situations um, can be resolved, and but we don't have to do that by ourselves. You know, when we're doing community stuff, you know, when we are um, looking at issues in our communities, don't we rally around? Don't we gather as a group and we problem solve that. So it's the same kind of thing. You're just doing it more on a personal level. And it's part of our self-care. It's part of taking care of ourselves, which is so, so important. When we can look at who we are, what we're faced with, and be able to reach out and ask for help, that's a great asset that we have is the ability to ask for help, the ability to um, hear what somebody else is bringing forward to us as a suggestion, right? 
and being able to evaluate that effectiveness of it. What are the benefits of that suggestion? And can I use it? Is it realistic? Uh, and is it going to benefit me? And so those are the things that we can kind of break down and evaluate when we make that decision about uh, honoring the ideas and suggestions from others. And so thinking about that moving forward, I hope that you're able to find uh, three people that you feel comfortable and talking to um, and sharing your thoughts and your feelings uh, and your ideas and that they're giving that you that support that you need. Um, it's very important that we be able to lean on each other, right? It's very, very important. And then because I'm going to go into the next piece that I kind of want to talk with you about a little bit is what happens when we don't rely on or when we don't take a look at what's going on with us internally. And even I'm going to suggest young people, you know, sometimes the outside things that are happening in our communities impact us as well. Um, I was just recently watching the news uh, about the incident of uh, a young lady in the state of Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, as a matter of fact, uh, and um, what happened between the exchange between her and law enforcement. And we see things on TV that are happening in our world nationally, and we have to be impacted by it. it, it as humans that have feelings, that have thoughts, uh, about what's happening, uh, that's just part of our humanness. Um, but what happens is, is when we don't have a release, and by that I mean when we aren't able to talk about situations and circumstances and things that are happening around us and to us in some instances, if we don't talk about that, it kind of manifests then uh, in our bodies. Uh, and sometimes because of the, it becomes a weight on our shoulders, um, and we don't have an outlet for it, it just kind of hangs there. It's like a, a cloud. It just hangs there. And what happens for some people is that then the, the mental behaviors take over. And by that, I mean, people begin to suffer from anxiety because the, they feel like the state of the world is on their shoulders and not on their chest. They begin to um, have uh, depression, uh, right? They begin to develop some um, mental health disorders that can be very, very um, strenuous on them um, to the point whereby, um, you know, they don't necessarily talk about their feelings at all uh, and they can become depressed. And depression is, uh, depression and anxiety are one of the top two mental disorders uh, in the United States today. Uh, it is common um, that people have and suffer from anxiety and depression, uh, and it has a lot to do with um, what's happening for them in their personal world, as well as the impact of society around them. Um, COVID-19 has really impacted our nation. It's impacted the world. And the effects of COVID-19 have looked, not only have loved ones been lost, right? Not only have people lost family members and friends, but people have also lost their jobs. Some instances, people have lost their homes. Uh, and so homelessness has now been increased. Uh, people have not been able to have food readily on their tables as they once did before COVID-19, right? Um, and you all know school, school went online. And so the socialization that was once there for you as young leaders has kind of been minimized now because of social distancing uh, and schools being online. And even you know, probably even as you're watching this, you're saying, oh my God, another video, another video that we have to watch. Why can't we do this in person, right? And so people need to understand that those things, those conditions, those circumstances can really, really uh, weigh on someone's mental capacity and on their physical being. 
And what happens is um, the uh, increase of mental health in the United States has increased dramatically. Uh, and so anxiety and depression has really come to surface and you can see it in outlets. You can see it through, um, you know, the crisis that we have in terms of, you know, um, non-peaceful demonstrations where people are um, destroying property and they're, you know, littering the streets and those kind of things. You also see it manifest in people using more and more substances. So substance abuse and misuse has really risen uh, among our uh, culture, uh, adults and young people alike, has really increased as a result of uh, COVID-19. Um, and more and more people have been dying, uh, have been suffering overdoses from opioid use. Uh, there's been an increase uh, in alcohol usage. Um, there's been an increase in marijuana usage and vaping. So substance misuse and abuse has really now taken an increase because sometimes that's what happens when individuals don't know how to deal with personal or societal circumstances in their lives is that they use substances to try and make the pain go away, right? And um, that substance use and misuse um, it can really uh, extenuate and exacerbate conditions because then what happens is if someone is not careful um, and they begin to use more and more than they had intended um, over a period of time uh, and they begin to suffer consequences as a result of their use, um, and now what we're talking about are substance use disorders, right? And so now you have a mental health condition coupled with a substance use uh, disorder. And the ramifications from that can be, um, you know, tripled or quadrupled because now there are additional consequences that happen as a result of that. Uh, some people, you were reading about an increase in suicide attempts now as a result of um, COVID-19 along with uh, mental health and uh, substance use and misuse. Uh, so there are um, outcomes that happen that are detriment to our well-being and detriment to our society when we don't start out by taking care of ourselves. And I think it's important that we have these conversations uh, because oftentimes um, we just kind of talk about them um, and we leave it there and people don't necessarily give us a remedy, right? We don't have solutions for how do we um, address those issues in our communities to make it for the better, right? So bringing that awareness now, I'm hoping you can um, have a greater insight and understanding about the importance of you taking care of yourself as a leader because we need you and we're depending upon you to make positive changes in our community. Which brings me to my last point then, talking about self-care. How do we continue to go about our day um, and taking care of ourselves while handling some of the other issues that are around us, right? And I talked a little bit before about just breathing and being present. But I also want to suggest to you that there's some other things that you could do as part of that wellness. Um, are you willing and able to just kind of get out and go out for a walk on your own uh, on a nice cool morning or a nice cool evening? Just take yourself out. And as you're walking about your neighborhood, just observing the pleasantries about your day, about the neighborhood, observing the resources, the rich resources that are available. It might be a next door neighbor that happens to be on the porch and waving hello to you with a smile, right? Um, it may be um, oftentimes that you can go to the corner store and just have a conversation with the owner. Sometimes these small corner stores are your best allies in the community as it relates to just helping uh, it make the community better through neighborhood cleanups or uh, through just kind of making a day of um, giving out some extra food and so collaborating with the neighborhood.
right? But those are some feel good moments. Those are some things that can really fill us up with quality uh, of life that makes what we're doing um, as doers in our community all the more better. Um, so taking a walk in the neighborhood and making observations for what's great about our communities can be a positive uh, attribute of self-care. The other thing that I mentioned in terms of mindfulness, getting more into that mindfulness and being present, being in the here and now and observing how we're feeling without judgment. You know, sometimes people say, well, you shouldn't feel that way. Feel how you feel, honor how you feel, be in the existence of how you feel um, and maybe journal. Sometimes writing things down, writing ourselves a letter, from time to time, I will um, write myself a letter and I use my uh, my hand that I don't necessarily use all the time. I'm left-handed, right? So sometimes I will write little notes to myself and I'll write it in my right hand um, because it helps me to use my other brain, the other side of my brain, and it helps me to concentrate a little bit more. And while I'm doing it, I'm honoring my breath. I'm breathing as each stroke I take and printing it or writing it. I'm breathing and I'm doing something a little bit different that I actually find relaxes me. It actually relaxes me. Um, and oh, by the way, maybe write yourself a cute little note honoring who you are. You're beautiful. You're bright. You're courageous. You're intelligent. You got this and you're going to be okay. And those nice little things that you can give to yourself and post them where you can see them. Post them on your bathroom mirror, on the, on the refrigerator, uh, on your bed post, wherever you can see that. Make sure you honor who you are through self-care and honoring who you are through words. Reminding yourself of, that you are a king or queen and that you are a dynamite person and someone loves you right? Someone cares about you. And it's important that we honor ourselves in our existence so that we can uh, take care of ourselves. That's the first element of taking care of who we are, is honoring who we are. When we can honor who we are, when we can spend some quality lone time with ourselves um, and just kind of reflect about um, how we're feeling and what do we want to do and who do we want to be, uh, and, and how do we go about making sure that we're getting quality sleep, that we're eating well, that we're drinking plenty of water. Water is uh, an essential tool to our body's movement. It's an essential tool to our body's energy. So making sure that those things that we're taking care of ourselves, right, in the most efficient and effective way uh, so that we can be our best. Right. And so these are little things that we can just really begin to uh, energize ourselves and make sure that we are the best and the brightest that we can be because the world needs us. Society needs us to make positive impact change for the good. Uh, another thing that you might want to think about in terms of self care is uh, to meditate. Um, I use this. I use my phone. My phone has about three or four different meditation apps that I can take this anywhere, which is why it's on my phone, right? I can take it anywhere and there are one minute or four minute or five minute meditations that are self-guided. Um, they will tell you to sit back and relax, find a comfortable space, and it will ask you to uh, begin to um, resonate with different parts of your body. Sometimes they start from the feet and work their way up to the head. And then other times meditations will start at the head and work all the way down to the feet. But the important thing is, is that we get in tune with our bodies, that we get in tune with our space, right? And that we find time to be with ourselves. Um, and so I invite you to think about what are some things, what's one thing that you can begin to do each day to honor self-care, just one thing. And when you get an opportunity to do that every day, consecutively for a while, add something else to that list. Add another thing that qualifies self-care. I talk about waking up. 
but what about before you wind down? My sister likes to say power down. What do you do to power down each day to kind of get into that space where you can relax? Sometimes people say, I don't sleep very well. And I suggest sometimes folks don't sleep very well it's because they have so much on their mind. And I also suggest they have so much on their mind because they don't talk about what's on their mind to get it out, to get rid of it. So I invite you to think about what do you do to power down? How do you power down? Sometimes meditation is a great way to power down. Sometimes um, there's just, there are some apps, there's some relaxation tapes or uh, conversations that are self-guided and they will actually help you power down and help you get to sleep. Um, and so uh, sometimes uh, reading uh, a meditation book is also something that you could do to power down. So I invite you to even think about powering down and how do you begin to do that as part of your self-care regimen. Self-care is very important. It positions us and poises us to be able to uh, become leaders in our communities to make positive change and to be available for others. So young people, um, I'm going to thank you in advance for your time. I'm going to thank you in advance for the, the greatness that you are. Uh, and the greatness that you're going to bring to your communities and the greatness that you're going to bring to society as a whole. Uh, you are a force to be reckoned with, not just today, but tomorrow, 24-7, 365. You are the difference in our communities. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you for walking with me through this space of time this morning. Uh, I want to thank you for um, honoring and being present uh, through this conversation. And I hope that there's been some pearls that you could take away with you in terms of um, some information, some new information that you can actually impose into uh, your life today. Um, you are the faces and voices of change uh, today and each and every day. And I honor you. I thank you. And I am so appreciative of uh, who you are and in the space that you are. Be great. Be great in whatever you do. Be great. God bless you. Namaste. Peace be with you.